Hey, welcome back. This is part two of our hydroelectric power involving Bernoulli's equation. So in the last question, we figured out the answer to this part of the question, which was the flow velocity at the intake of this pipe. And now we're going to look at part B. This is going to be a very interesting question because this is asking what is the difference between the hydrostatic pressure and the inlet pressure at point two? So at point two, there's actually two pressures that we're looking at. We have our regular P2, and then we also have our static pressure there. So you might be wondering, well, maybe we can just look at points one and two, so this line and this line, and use our old pressure equation, which was the pressure at some point is equal to your initial pressure plus rho g d, where d is the depth between those two points. So would this pressure right here based off of this equation be the pressure at point two? Well, no. Why? Because this equation right here is our hydrostatic pressure equation. In other words, the fluid has to be in static equilibrium in order for this equation to apply. But because the water is also moving at this point, we have to take into account flow velocity there because that flow velocity is going to affect pressure just as it does in Bernoulli's equation. So we can't just take the P naught value, which would be this atmospheric pressure at the top of the reservoir plus rho times G times D, which is this depth right here. In this case, that's 50 meters, right? 250 to 200. We can't just use this equation because that is only for the hydrostatic part of this problem. Because the fluid is flowing, we also need to take into account fluid dynamics. So what we could do is we could draw a streamline from one to two and then apply Bernoulli's equation for those two points. Because in the last part of the example, we figured out what the flow velocity V2 was at point two. So now we have all of the terms we need in order to figure out the pressure or the difference in pressure at point two. So that is very important. If we go back to this question, the question itself is asking what is the difference between the hydrostatic pressure at point two and the inlet pressure at point two. In other words, what is P static at point two minus P two? So this is the static part of the pressure and this is the, I guess, dynamic part of the pressure. So what is this difference in value? We don't actually need to calculate P2 and P static, we just need to calculate the difference in pressure at that point. So let's go ahead and do this. So again, this is the hydrostatic pressure equation and I'll leave this here because, well, we'll need it soon. Okay, so I just went ahead and erased all the work that we did from the last video, but I kept the most important part, which is the velocity at point two. That's the inlet or the intake velocity there at the pipe. And so now I wanna apply a Bernoulli's equation from point one to point two. So let's do that. So on the left side of the equation, we'll have P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho times G times Y1. And on the right side, we'll have P2 plus one half rho times V2 squared plus rho times G times Y2. Okay, cool. So one thing to note is that this term here on the left side is going to go to zero because again, we're going to assume that V1 is equal to zero meters per second. So the velocity, the flow velocity here at point one, because it's on the surface of the reservoir, is flowing extremely slowly relative to the flow velocity at two, which is 17.5 meters per second. So that does make things a little bit easy. On the left, we have P1 plus rho times G times Y1, and that is equal to P2 plus all of this stuff here on the right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna solve this equation for P2 because that is the pressure that we're looking at. So P2 is the inlet pressure at point two. Okay, cool, so that is this right here, and this is exactly this equation, but I just solved for P2, so I just moved terms around until I could get P2 all alone on the left-hand side, and then everything else here on the right. So the reason I did this is because there's something very interesting going on. So I want you to look at this term right here, where we're subtracting rho g1 minus rho g y2. Now, if I rewrite those two terms, I'm gonna get something like this. Plus, I can pull out the rho and the g from both of these terms, and what I'm left with is y1 minus y2, and then, of course, we have the one half 
uh, rho v2 squared. Now, what is so important about this y1 minus y2? Well, if we look back on our diagram, y1 is right here at the 250 meter elevation, and y2 is right here at the 200 meter elevation. So y1 is going to be 250, y2 is going to be 200, and if we subtract those like we have here, we're going to get a depth of 50 meters. However, I'm going to call the distance from point 1 down to point 2 the distance d. So what I could do here is this equation turns out to be p1 plus rho g d minus 1 half rho v squared. Now why did I write it like that? Well you'll see here that this term is awfully familiar, right? These two terms are essentially the same. Now why did I write this like this? Well if you look at this p1 plus rho g d, well doesn't that look pretty similar to our hydrostatic pressure equation? Again, the hydrostatic pressure equation takes an initial pressure, P0, and in our case that is going to be P1, and then it adds to it this rho g d term. And the d is the distance from P0, in this case P1, down to the point that we're studying. So that is going to be this point right here on the diagram at P2. So you can see that this entire equation has two parts. It has this static part, which I'll just say is static. And because the fluid is flowing at point two, we also have to take into account the dynamic pressure, which gets accounted for by this minus one half rho v2 squared term. So I'm gonna move this up. And for this term right here, I'm gonna say that this is P static. And so what I'm really left with is that P2 is equal to whatever P static is minus this one half rho v2 squared. Now, if I rewrite this equation and just try to get all the pressures to one side, then I'm gonna be left with P static minus P2 is equal to this one half rho v2 squared term. Now, if we go back to the question, Again, the question is asking what is the difference between the hydrostatic and the inlet pressure. And again, this is the hydrostatic pressure and this is the inlet pressure. So this difference is what this question is asking for. And that difference is equal to, in this case, 1 half rho v2 squared. Okay, so let's just solve that out. So the difference, p static minus p2, is equal to 1 half rho, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times v2 squared. That was 17.5 meters per second squared. And that gives us a difference of 153 1,125 pascals, or about 153.1 kilopascals. So that is the difference in the hydrostatic pressure at point two and the inlet pressure at point two. Again, there's two different pieces that make up the total pressure at point two. So I'll just rewrite that here. So P static, the difference in P static and P2 is 153. 0.1 kilopascal. There it is, the answer to question part B.